Welcome back to the 101 series. Let's talk about epilepsy. Epilepsy is a relatively common condition that we'll come across in our careers, but also is a favourite for examiners. This is going to be a whistle-stop tour providing you with the foundations of what you need to know for your exams. In general, epilepsy classification is really based upon where are the foci of the seizures, does it actually affect conscious levels, and are there any special features? So, let's start with focal seizures. Traditionally, this is what used to be known as partial seizures, with the foci only on one side of the brain. If the conscious level of the seizures aren't affected, they are termed focal aware, or previously known as simple partial. And if the consciousness is impaired, then they are defined as focal impaired awareness, or previously known as complex partial. Furthermore, if there are motor features, then it will be classified as motor, such as a Jacksonian March seizure. And if there are non-motor or sensory features, they will be called focal sensory or focal non-motor. Generalised seizures are more well-known subtype of epilepsy, with a foci of the seizure involving both sides of the brain. In these seizures, consciousness is always affected, unlike in focal seizures. However, there can be further classification depending on whether it's separated into motor and non-motor. So, generalised motor... The first type you need to know is about tonic-clonic or grand mal seizures. This is the classic tonic phase, followed by clonus of all the muscles. Tonic seizures, where there's only a tonic phase, and clonic seizures, where there's only a clonic phase, are other subtypes. There are also atonic seizures, which are classically known as drop attacks, where there is a sudden muscular atony. Now, generalised non-motor seizures include typical absent seizures, which would often include a brief period of around 10 seconds of an interruption of consciousness, where the person is often staring to space. Or atypical absent seizures, where again, these only happen for a brief period of time, but often have some minor movements, such as blinking or chewing. You can also get secondary generalised seizures, in which part of the seizure starts as a focal seizure on one side of the brain, and then moves to a generalised seizure by moving its foci to both sides of the brain. Treatment of epilepsy is one of the key topics that you need to be familiar with. NICE typically recommended starting anti-epileptic treatment after the second seizure and not the first, unless there is any evidence of neurological deficit, structural abnormality, or if the patient is of higher risk when they have seizures. NICE have also quite clear guidance about their choice for first-line guidance, but every hospital and trust will have its own local guidance. But for your exams, the following is a brief summary. Generalised seizures. Tonic-clonic seizures, the first line is sodium valparate, with second line, lamotrigine or carbamazepine. Myoclonic seizures, the first line is sodium valparate, with second line, lamotrigine or clonazepam. And absent seizures, first line is sodium valparate or ethosuximide. For focal seizures, the first line is carbamazepine or lamotrigine, with second line, levetiracetam or valparate. As you can see, in generalised seizures, sodium valparate is often first line. The NICE, however, have clear guidance that sodium valparate should be avoided in pregnancy or any female of childbearing age unless it's absolutely necessary to do so, given the clear links with teratogenicity and neurodevelopmental delay. It's also a cytochrome P450 inhibitor and causes a significant number of side effects including gastrointestinal upset, ataxia, alopecia, tremor and hepatitis. With regards to pregnancy, it is thought that carbamazepine and lamotrigine are the safest options, with breastfeeding generally safe other than those on barbiturates or primidone antiepileptics. Regarding contraception, it is thought due to the pharmacokinetics of many of the antiepileptic drugs, some contraceptives aren't as effective as they should be, and thus barrier methods like condoms are also recommended. The UK MEC guidance would suggest that the combined oral contraceptive pill and progesterone-only pills would be UK MEC 3 for many common anti-epileptic drugs, including phenytoin, carbamazepine and topiramate. When it comes to DBLA guidance, this is something that will crop up periodically in your career, but definitely in your exams. It's very much an examiner's favourite question, and worth being very familiar with. For first seizures, no driving for 6 months. If you have confirmed epilepsy, you shouldn't drive for 12 months unless you're seizure-free. And if you're withdrawing medication, no driving for 6 months after the withdrawal of anti-epileptics. Whilst we're also talking about epilepsy, we should also cover status epilepticus. This is defined as a medical emergency, usually when a seizure lasts more than 5 minutes, or if there are two seizures within 5 minutes. After initial resuscitative evidence, 
benzodiazepines are usually first line. Diazepam rectally is often preferred out of hospital, with intravenous lorazepam used in hospital. Second line agents like barbiturates or phenytoin are often used, but if that fails, the patient really needs to be generally anaesthetised. And that's that. I really hope you enjoyed this overview of epilepsy and gives you some comfort for your exams. I want to point you guys in the direction of our Instagram page, at dorky underscore docs, where there's so much more revision content available, as well as our Facebook group and page, where we're discussing a range of revision topics. But if you enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. But otherwise, good luck and I'll see you in the next video.